Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rada McBerto. Well, is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a what again? What do I say all the time? We are going to have a great show for you today. And the topic of discussion to start the show is our good old Bernie or good old Senor Sanders is doing very, very well. It seems like, I don't know, is he going to win uh, Super Tuesday or something, folks? I don't know, but uh, things are starting to look pretty darn tight. Seems like the race is starting to take focus. It seems like what we are looking at, it's going to be a an interesting, an interesting set of events. And what we are going to have to be cognizant of, what we are going to have to be very careful of, is that we do not get going forward, you know what? The type of interference that are that's going to change things, the type of interference that could cause problems and have the repeat of what occurred in 2016. But we're not going to allow that this time, right, folks? We're not going to allow that. You know, it, it is interesting because people are starting to panic because what, you know, they, they claim that they've left Bernie Sanders alone for a long time because, oh, well, you know, it turns out that uh, we knew he wasn't going to win, so therefore why expend any energy on this man, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, folks, it turns out that uh, that was foolhardy because, well, I don't, th- I, actually, I don't think, uh, it's not that they didn't really try to attack the Bernie Sanders. It's as it turns out, um, the as it turns out, he just was, I'm sorry, uh, he just was, what can I say? He was ahead of the curve. He was completely ahead of the curve. Anyhow, as it turns out, um, Bernie Sanders is ahead. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get the show started. Let's go ahead and start the show the right way. Title of the show today is... Bernie winning Super Tuesday and various other progressive topics. We'll have other progressive topics as well. Bernie Sanders is up in two of the biggest Super Tuesday states. I haven't checked the others. And he is on top of the national polls. What will Democratic, what will the Democratic establishment do? It will do Democrats well to let the country choose. It will do the Democrats well. Let's ensure, let's make sure that the country chooses, folks. Look, this is a call-in show, and I would love to hear from you. I have a whole lot of material uh, that I can cover. Welcome, MM. Uh, Bernie is not right from America. Please explain why you say that, MM, and we can talk about it. But anyhow, folks, uh, the telephone number is 646-716-5812. If you want to call and be on air, 646-716-5812. It's right there on the screen. If you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, 646-716-5812. If you are on twi- uh, Twitch or if you're on on uh, Periscope or you're on Facebook. Or, actually, if you're on Facebook, we have it all over. But please, if you want to leave comments that I can see, Immediately, you have to leave it on the facebook.com slash politics done right page. That's facebook.com slash politics done right. If you go to the actual page for this show, I will see all those messages. All the other places places that it's shared, I may not see those. Of course, I can see all of the uh, messages on, uh, on, on YouTube. And folks, if you're on YouTube and you can be so kind, go ahead and always use that. Super Chat. I love Super Chat. And tell me something in Super Chat, and I'll tell everybody that you said that in Super Chat. Anyhow, are you engaged? The Democratic race is taking form. It is playing out just as we thought it would for some time now. It's Now is not the time to cower, though. It is a time to lean in. It is the time to lean in. And most progressives are doing just that throughout the country. What is amazing is everywhere that I go, I was in Philadelphia earlier this year, uh, last year, or late last year. I was also in, in D.C. late last year. And the one thing that I'm noticing with, with progressives throughout the country, they're activated. They're working. 
You know what I mean? The, the thing about it is the reason you see Bernie Sanders ascending in the polls and uh, it, it, to, to many, they're like, where did that come from? You know, people see the polls that, are, that have been taken. First of all, we think these polls are kind of latent, right? In other words, we think Bernie Sanders' progress is actually better than these polls would show because of the nature of the people who follow Bernie Sanders. Hi, Lee Grant, welcome aboard. And MM, welcome aboard. So my, my theory is that He's actually polling better than the polls would indicate because of the nature of his, uh, his, his, his immediate supporters, his current supporters, are not the ones that answer polling calls, are not the ones that sit and, you know, you know they're kind of the ones that'll say, ah, I don't have time for that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyhow, before, in, in every single one of my blog posts for these shows, now I have a Little note that I say, we need Medicare for all. I want your stories. Have you had issues with your healthcare coverage? Have you had billing issues? Did you feel like your insurance company was trying to pull one over on you? I am interested in every story you have with regards to healthcare. So please, please, please drop me a line at info at politicsdoneright.com. Info at politicsdoneright.com. Let's make Medicare for All a reality. You know who's going to make that happen? You are going to make that happen, people. It's not going to be uh, some savior. It's not going to be one person. It's not going to be somebody pick up the mantra and run for it. We all together have to pick up the mantra and run like hell to support the things that best will support us all, Medicare for all. So now there's a controversy occurring in um, right now in, in, in Las Vegas with the Culinary Union. And I, I just saw this thing. I don't know if this is accurate, but it says the Culinary Union is has endorsed somebody. Is that really true? I don't think that could be true because earlier they said they weren't going to... Uh, no, no, okay, uh, I, I want to answer that one f that, that just came in from Lee Grant. Lee Grant just said uh, that Medicare for All was the death of Elizabeth Warren. If Medicare for All was the death of Elizabeth Warren, why is Bernie Sanders, the author of Medicare for All, on top of the polls? I don't think that is quite accurate, my dear friend um, uh, Lee Grant. Okay, um, I'm just reading this stuff here that says... Las Vegas Culinary Union announces endorsement. The Culinary Union is holding a press conference in Las Vegas to announce the endorsement ahead of the Nevada caucus. Giocondo uh, Arguello Klein, Secretary of Church of the Culinary Union, will speak at the press conference in Las Vegas. Let's see if I see who they claim they're going to invest in. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't see that. What time is, did they say that was going to occur? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's holding a press conference in Las Vegas to announce... Uh, let's see. I don't see that they... Because they claim they weren't going to make an, 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 an endorsement. And if they make an endorsement and it, they are endorsing somebody that is against Medicare for All, I think at that point, that union... Sh well, I don't want to say the union is dead. But at that point, we know that the union would not be working for the, the, for the people, for their, their membership. If they don't support that. So I want to further. This occurred on February 13th. So that's an old article. That was yesterday's article. I don't know what's going on there. Anyhow. I have I have to play a, a story for you first of all. I, a few ago. A few days ago. I had a guy on from Norway. And he was talking a whole lot about. Uh what was occurring over there with uh, how their their policies work, etc. Uh, MM, I'm going to stick with me. I'm going to address all of your issues there that you have on YouTube. Let me play this video about this man in Norway, and we will then address address your issues uh, because I want what I want us to be is not just me spewing about the policies that I support, but I want to go behind the math, behind the facts of the support, and if there are issues that you differ with me on, I would like you to try to point out to me 
where you think I have erred. And if, if for some reason you're able to find that on air, I'll make a change. I would definitely make a change on air. So MM, stay with me. Let me play this particular video on privatization and then I'll definitely get back with you. So hang with me. Here's a video from Norway. There we go. I interviewed a man from Norway a few days ago. His son got into a cataclysmic accident and he lost a whole lot. You know, he got real, real ill and he had a helicopter that had to go into the mountains to pick him up after his accident, take him to the hospital, all that good stuff. And he never had to pay a dime because within their social safety net, everybody pays taxes for whatever eventuality could happen to anyone. And, uh, you know, he was saying, Egberto, let me tell you, we're in Norway and, you know, every now and then we run up against our right wing as well. So check this out. Yeah, I saw one of your videos the other day and you were talking to somebody. I thought, man, you know, people need to know about this. And, yeah, we're living it. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff. Life is complicated and nothing is free. Sure, it's expensive to live in Norway, but you don't have to pay $15,000 a year to, uh, I don't know where I would get $15,000 a year to pay for it. Health, Health insurance. insurance? Yeah, that's what it costs. Uh, but, you know, we pay more for gasoline. Uh, we pay uh, we pay a, a moderate amount of taxes, uh, you know, income tax. We just got a different attitude. And, and there, you know, we got we got right wingers here, too, who are trying to who are trying to privatize stuff. They managed to privatize railroads last year and they, and it just went to hell in a handbasket and all prices went up and, and trains didn't run on time. You know, they're trying to privatize the post office and stuff. Uh, fortunately, they haven't come so far as to, as to ruin the healthcare system. So That is what a lot of people don't understand. What you just said is prescient. Absolutely so. Now, the reason I brought that up, you know, over here, all, everybody wants to privatize everything. Not everybody. The capitalists want to privatize everything. Uh, you know, what I try to inform people is math is absolute. If you try to privatize something that's in the commons, healthcare, transportation, and all these kinds of issues like bus, I'm talking about city transportation and all of that. The, the only way it works, right? Because remember, the company, corporation or whatever, who's going to buy the buses? Who are going to buy the trains? They're not only going to do that, right? They also want to make high salaries for their executives. And they also want to have a profit for the shareholders who are going to buy the trains. But if you're a government and you buy the trains and you buy the buses, you don't have to pay executives high salaries. You don't have to pay shareholders. You don't have to pay any of that. You just have to have the cost of the bus, the cost of the trains, the maintenance of all of these, right? And that means a lower cost to everybody who has to pay the bus fare, the train fares, etc. So something like that are that's essential like people moving around in a city and buses and trains. Something as essential as healthcare. We want to have the least privatization in those domains. And why do we want the least privatization? Because we understand the additional cost of privatization. People like to talk about efficiency. There's nothing inherent within privatization that is more efficient than government, right? The same people that would work for government is the same people that would work for a private company. The question the question is about leadership. The question is about how efficient you will make leadership. What the Powell Manifesto had to do. The Powell Manifesto had to make Americans stupid. It had to tell you that there was something inherently better in a private company than a public company company and the only but the really only difference between the private and public company is that a private company they have leaders they have managers a public company have leaders and managers but that private company also has shareholders and bonuses for executives that they work for that's how it works so inherently the only way for those executives and those shareholders to get money is either to raise the prices of the same product being produced either by, by the public company or the private company or to pay the employees of the private company less so that more of that money can go to the shareholders. And that's exactly what happened. From charter schools, if you take a look at charter schools that are private, they pay their teachers less. They have less requirements of the teachers in order for their shareholders and executives to make more. It's not rocket science. It's math. But what what they try to do to you, my brothers and my sisters, is to ask you to disregard those realities. And you disregard those realities at your peril. Because what it means is as you go down that road of privatization,
privatization, it means teachers make less money. It means all the people working within those sectors ultimately will be minimized. So they say, but wait, isn't it true that the, the public sector pays more? Ah, it all depends on the job. Supply and demand, supply and demand. So we have to learn these issues so that we don't have those who lie to you actually are successful. So that we make sure that those people that continue to lie to you, they're not successful at doing it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on a few of these state these comments, these early comments, and then we'll move on. And anybody who wants to call in and say something, whether they agree with or disagree, I really don't care because, you know, we, we entertain conversation here. You can give us a call at 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Okay, let's go ahead and start with, um, uh, let's see, Lee Grant said that Medicare for All was the death of Warren. If that were the case, Bar Bar Bernie Sanders should be gone already because he's on the top of the polls. He's number one, period. Overtook, Bur uh, overtook Biden by more than 10 points. He's ahead in Texas. He's ahead in California. He's ahead just about everywhere else. So he's a top cat. And he's doing it demographically, he's doing it statewide, he's doing it numerically right now. We don't know what the future holds, but right now, that's what's occurring. All right, Mike Cisek says, I have a problem with a type of M Medicare for all through the VA. I have to get supplemental private care. I agree with you, uh, Mike Cisek. Uh, everything that you have, you see, that supplemental private care wasn't there because the government was lousy. It was there because the government was made lousy so that private corporations should, could come in and pill for you. You see, that is the reality. The reality is the government could do everything that private corporation is doing, that supplemental private care. They could have done that themselves, but they got lobbyists to say, no, 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 no. Let the private sector do that. And the private sector, of course, is more expensive because it has additional costs. Folks, Please, if you're listening to us, share us right away. Please, we need to make sure that others get this information because there's so much misinformation going out there that it is, it is distorting people's mental capacity. It's distorting people's ability to think. And it's all done psychologically. It's psychological warfare to have you believe anti-mathematical thing. And we don't, we don't do that here. We only stick by the math. Okay, my brother M.M. says, Bernie just uh, wrong on so many levels. His solutions are outdated. His policies are dated. Job guarantee in federal job is not the solution for America. And Medicare for all doesn't work for me. Okay, uh, I can, I'd like to take those one at a time. You said, it's just wrong on levels. His solutions are outdated. What particular solution is outdated? And based on what he is trying to correct with that outdated solution that you claim, what would you do instead? Uh, as well, you said his policies are dated. What specific policy would you call dated? You said a, a federal job guarantee. Uh, what is a problem with having a job guarantee? Don't we want everybody working? I, let, me, let me tell you something that I've been thinking about, and I'm going to put this in the book, right? We have issues. We have a lot of work that needs to be done. In other words, if you go out, you know, we need to build canals with climate change that's occurring. We're getting disparate wa uh, waves of water and fire in different places, right? In other words, where used to be dry is wet, where used to be wet is dry, all kinds of crazy things, right? There is so much that humanity can do to mitigate what humanity has destroyed. Humanity has destroyed many a habitat. We can correct that, right? The first issue you're going to hear is, we can't afford it. So let me ask you to ponder, po uh, yeah, to, to posit something here. Here we go. We have available people to work. We have available work to do. The thing that connects work and people is an economic system. If an economic system is unable to connect work with people, that economic system is a failed economic system. If an economic system depends on 
throwing you out of a job when there are downturns, even though jobs need to get done, then that's a failed economic system. And we have been living with failed economic systems for a long time because anytime somebody talks about doing something else, they're called a communist, they are called all kinds of names because we are trying to get into a model that serves humanity as opposed to a model that, that allows a few to extract from everybody else. So let me go ahead and, and put some meat onto that. I can use Lee Grant's statement on YouTube to put some meat onto that. Lee Grant says, uh, someone just calculated that the cost of Bernie's plan would add $93 trillion to the federal budget over 10 years. In other words, he means it will add about $9.3 trillion a year is what he's saying. My question to Lee Grant is, how much is being spent on health care right now over 10 years? You have just stated to me that Medicare for All is less expensive. The only difference is if all that money is going to one entity or being paid for by one entity, that means the government or the private corporation that we are going to create to do a single-payer system is going to spit out $93 million as opposed to a 1,000 private health insurance companies spooning out $140, million, $40 trillion. So in the aggregate, you have just agreed with me, Brother Grant. You have just told me with your numbers that health, Medicare for All costs less than our current private health care system. You've just told me that. And in the process of telling me that, you have just given us a reason to work even harder for single-payer Medicare for All. Because you're saying the efficiency of having one person pay the bill is a lot better than having multiple people uh, pay the bill and a lot of folks skimming the premiums that we pay. So thank you for agreeing with me, Brother Lee Grant. All right. Mike Cisek says the VA do, do its own care. No, the VA is a part of the government, okay? But it's run much more expensive than the private sector. That's, brother, Lee Grant, I mean, not Lee Grant, Mike Cisak. that's an impossibility. Add up the prices that doctors in the private sector make. Add up the number that doctors in the, in the public sector make. Add up all the numbers. It makes mathematic, it's a mathematical fallacy, sir. Please, please, if you're going to spill numbers, be accurate and be honest. Lee Grant now says, communist takeover of the government is a dated failed policy. Um, Mr. Grant, could you please tell me uh, who is a communist that wants to take over our government? I'm still looking for that. You know, uh, you are too intelligent to buy the right wing rhetoric that is attempting to lie and, and scare people so that they continue to give their money to the rich fat cats who's abusing them. You know, it's like, a, like somebody who beat their spouse, you know. Stop that. All those things are to, to put fear into people's minds so that they continue to continue to seek the assistance of those who are robbing them blind. So no, Lee Grant. It's not about communist takeover. I don't believe in communism. I believe in free enterprise. Free enterprise. You have an enterprise that you want to create? Create it. You don't have to worry about health care because your taxes covers that you are going to get the best health care that America can provide. You don't have to hold back because you don't have health care. MM says Trump 2020 period. Um, you know what, MM, I would love to MM, let, I would love to know, sir, and respectfully, what do you do for a living? I would like to know that because I would like to address Trump for you in the context of what you do for a living. So if you don't mind telling me this is again, and I don't want to be um, confrontational with you. I want to be uh, educational. I want to be uh, enlightening, 
I want to be empowering with you so that we don't just go on to slogans like Trump 2020. Oh, maga, maga, maga. That's not what I want. I care too much about you, including a Trump supporter. And by the way, MM, I got family that's Trump supporters as well, and I'm working on them too. Okay? So, I mean, you're not the enemy at all. You're actually the friend, my friend. Because my, my care is not for just progressives. My care is for everybody because actually I think most people are in fact progressives. And I would, I would warrant that I ask you a few questions at MM, you would be a progressive as well. All right, Mike Cisa says, Egberto, I actually asked those in the VA and yes, it is a fact. It is more expensive. Much of it is administrative costs. And that is, I don't normally say this to my listeners, my friends, but Mike, that's a lie. That is a that's a cold-blooded lie. The numbers are out there, Mr. CSEC. The numbers are out there. Okay, MM says, I am a businessman. Trump is doing a lot for America. I would like you to enumerate for me, MM, what do you think Trump has done for your particular business? What kind of business are you in and what Trump has done for your business? By the way, I'm a, I'm a businessman as well in several different domains. So um, I, I think I'm very qualified to answer that for you, M.M. So I'd like to know what kind of business you're in, and then let's talk within that domain what kind of business you're in. Uh, but while I get more messages on the chat in the chat room on, on all the different platforms, I want to play my, uh, uh, Michael Moore's statement on Medicare for All because what I, I think what Michael Moore does is he was able to express it in such a you know what, how would how would I say Michael Moore does it a very in a very good manner. Let's see, and your boss. That's one that I want to play. Here we go. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. You know, um, the healthcare debate should be pretty simple. Unfortunately, they need to make it a complicated issue so that they can find ingenious ways to extract from you. That's the bottom line. I want to play the discussion as Michael Moore schooled Chris Matthews, and then we'll take it on the other side. If you read Machiavelli, who is brilliantly true, maybe awful but true, he said in the prints, it's very hard to sell new ideas and a new program because people who have what they have want to hold on to it, and they never know how they're going to do under the new system. So you got people, 140 million people with health care, they pay for it. It may not be the greatest health care, but they got it. It's a burden to hand. And you got these culinary workers out in Clark County, out in yeah. Vegas, yeah. who are going to vote next week. They have refused to endorse. Now, that's a pretty progressive well, union. A lot of working people, waitresses is weight purse, all kinds of people, you know, yeah. people in the gaming industry. Sure. Why are they not endorsing? How do you, they're, not, because they're afraid of losing their uh, health care plans, apparently. That's what no. they negotiated for. No, they're not. The leadership of the union, they did negotiate good health care. The problem with that is, is that the employers, just as we saw with General Motors during the strike in the fall, the third or fourth day into it, the chair of General Motors ended all health care for all UAW workers. The CEO could do it just like that because it's not a right. It's not guaranteed by the law. Leaving your health care up to the fact that your employer is going to actually follow through. If you think that's something that's permanent, if you think it's a, a system that works, I mean, I made a whole movie about this, about, about just people who have health care and how the insurance companies, the private insurance will fight you tooth and nail. If you get sick, if you have a family member in the hospital, they will try to deny every single claim because it's the only way they make a profit. So they have to do that. But this is why we have to remove profit and private health insurance from the system. We would not allow a private police force, a private fire department, a private library. The things that we consider to be rights in a democratic society, this is, this is where, the, and you, you ask a UAW member in Detroit or Flint what, on that day when the CEO just said, that's it, health care, over, you're not covered as of this minute. They have the power to do that. You can never put the power like of your health care in the hands of your boss. Roger, you can never put the power of health care in the hands of your boss. And that's the basic, basic issue that we have to get across into people's minds. You don't give the power to your boss, your master, the slave driver. You do not do that. And that is the reason why it is essential that you have Medicare for all. Now, uh, 
Michael Moore was being kind to the unions. The unions have to get with the program. They have to stop being bought by the plutocracy themselves. They have to get with the program. It is essential that we not fall or cower to those who understand that if we look at all these issues by the numbers, having a private healthcare system is a fraud on the American citizen. Okay, I'm glad. M.M., thank you very much for coming back with that statement because what you did with, um, with that statement is, first of all, Michael Moore hit it on the nail, hit the nail on the head. But M.M., thank you so kindly for coming back with the statement. You said, what about someone like me who have private insurance, which I, b I paid a lot and like it? Bernie is going to take it all away. I am so happy for that statement. Let me tell you, let me explain something to you. I am a business owner as well, Willie's Computer Software Company. You can look it up. I actually, uh, I'm bringing, I've, I've brought that company all the, down to the bones. It's making no money anymore because I'm doing full-time activism. I'm, I'm so passionate about getting our country, being a part, a very small part of, of getting our country to think correctly. Hi, Arkin uh, T13, to get our country to think correctly. And folks, those on YouTube, if you if you like what we're doing here, if you like how we are enlightening people, don't don't forget, go ahead and hit that dollar sign and give us a shout, a, a, a super chat, and I'll announce you as a super chat provider. Okay, so here here is what we go, um, uh, brother MM. So I had private insurance as well. My insurance cost costing me, I think it was like, I don't I don't have all the figures again. I forget all of it, but, but let's say fifteen hundred dollars a month with a ten thousand dollar deductible or something like that. So in effect, I was paying a whole lot of insurance money, but it was you know I wasn't I you know I couldn't use enough of that to make up the amount that I put in there, which is okay because insurance is not a product. Insurance is a bet. When you get insurance, you are making a bet that you are going to get sick. And you're going to spend more than you spend more money than you put in. That's the bet you make. But most people don't get sick, so they don't get there. And and that's good. That is good. The problem with insur private insurance is when you think about healthcare as a as a as a right, you don't want healthcare to be something that stops you from being able to open your company, sir. You don't want to stop healthcare. Uh, you don't want healthcare to stop you from doing the things that you want to do, mm. You don't. You really don't. So here's the deal, M. And when I paid for my own insurance uh, on the private insurance and all of that, I could understand how the 30% of that money was going to shareholders, to the 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 the, uh, the president of the company, the vice president, the CEO. They were they were duplicate services. Like all of them were marketing to try to get you to buy, get the other person to buy. That's what they use their money for. They don't use the money for healthcare. Now here's what you said, M. M. You said. I pay a lot for and I like the insurance. Do you really like the insurance or do you like the doctors that you're able to go see and the service that you're able to get? Because I, I don't know any... The insurance company just pays a bill. You don't go around liking the person who pays the bill for you. You go about liking the thing that gives you the service. Am I correct, MM? I'm pretty sure you would agree with that if we're honest with each other. Now, here's the deal. Bernie's not taking that away. Bernie doesn't want to, Medicare, for, and this is the thing, when you have private insurance, you are a slave to the particular insurance company you chose. So here's a trick that they play on you. They said, oh, we don't want no single payer system because what happens is when we have private insurance, you can go shop on a market. You can shop with insurance company A, B, C, D, or E. So if you are if you're if you don't want to buy breast cancer coverage, if you don't want you can do all that shopping independently. You know what the thing is about getting sick MM and I have a I have a wife with lupus, a daughter who just got a stroke. Let me tell you something about getting sick. You don't know what it is you're going to be hit with. So you go ahead and you buy the wrong insurance policy, you go ahead and you know that you're going to be eventually bankrupt. Let me tell you about Medicare for all now. Again, beforehand Private insurance tells you what medicines you are allowed to take based on which ones you pick. But you pick an insurance company and then they tell you. They tell you what you can use, what medicines you can use. They tell you which doctors you can go to. They tell you which hospital you can go to. So that private insurance company that you are talking about, sir, 
gives you no choice. After you have decided which private insurance company you want to use, they are your masters, not the other way around. They tell you what they will pay for you. And MM, if you're honest, you know that I'm right. Now, here is Medicare for All. Medicare for All says the following. We have laws now. Healthcare is a right. You will have coverage for your eyes. You will have coverage for your teeth. And you can go anywhere in this country, whether it is in Alaska, whether it is in Texas, whether it is in California. Check your policy, my dear MM. Can you go get service here in Texas? Can you go get service in California? Is it in network or is it out of network? If it's in network, how much is it going to cost you? If it's out of network, how much is it? None of that exists with Medicare for All. Then they say, oh, but it's going to cost more. That's a lie. It cannot cost more because there are less charges. You no longer have to pay the executives. You no longer have to pay all these Hundreds of insurance companies that have advertising costs, no mass. There's no more of that. All those sh rich shareholders that are sitting down at their pools, drinking tea, saying, how much did Cigna go up? And by the way, when Cigna stock goes up, it's because they're denying you service. Cigna stock goes up, the more services they're able to deny you. The least they have to pay out to you is how it goes. But with Medicare for All, we as a country, we decide... These are what we consider your rights, and the country pays for it. We don't have insurance companies fighting for risk pools and all those kinds of things. So you see, my brother M.M., if you are supporting a private in health insurance system, remember, all they do is pay a bill. The only other thing they do is manage risk. And manage risk means trying to get healthy people so that unhealthy people stay out. And if you happen to be in that plan and you get unhealthy, they try to get a, find a way to get rid of you. That is private insurance. And you can't blame them. You really cannot blame them because they are a business. They are there. The fiduciary responsibility of a corporation is to maximize the profits for its shareholders. And the only way for a private insurance company to maximize its profits is to raise your rates or to deny you service. And what they do currently, they do both. Medicare for All is different. Medicare for All says, we don't tell you what medicines you can take, your doctor does. We don't tell you what, uh, what hospital to go to, your doctor does. That is what it is all about. So when you say things like, Bernie is going to take away my health care, my brother, no. He's, go he's going to give you more than what you want, more, not more than what you want, more than what any private healthcare system can give you because remember, remember what they're for. MM says, Michael Moore's analogy of private firefighter is not the right analogy. Actually, it is the right analogy because it is in the commons. Okay, Robert Lewis says, Egberto, I do not understand why when I went to the EMG for my appendix removal at Herman Hospital, I provided two of my insurance, Blue Cross Healthcare and my VA insurance, and still was not enough to cover my bill. I think it's so much of a ripoff insurance. Actually, you know something, uh, Roberto? I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I wish you had said that before because they probably ripped you off. It was enough. With you being a, 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 with you being a person who served us, in Iraq, that, that work at the VA, with you having your private insurance as well, it should have costed you nothing because you have paid your dues. And I wish you had mentioned that so that you could have told me the story so I could have publicized that story. Uh, Shelly re replying to, I don't, okay. Robert also said, I really think with two insurance, all of my bills should be have paid, especially of someone who served the, absolutely, sir. Roberto, you're right. You're right. Mike C said, government programs never innovate, which is how things get better and cheaper. That's why private, what makes you believe that government programs don't innovate? Let me correct that. Every single university is uh, develop drugs through their research programs. And the persons who pay those university research programs is the National Health Service, NIH, NIHS or whatever it's called, National Institute of Health, okay? 
So, Mike, it is important for us to understand what the private sector does. Most of our drugs are developed at universities with grants from the federal government. In other words, the federal government understands that the places where intelligence occur is at universities. And therefore, we invest our tax dollars at universities. The universities usually start to develop these drugs. And when these drugs seem to be viable, a private company comes and says, Hey, nice, neat. I'll, I'll create a building or I'll, I'll buy this from you. And even though the main investor in that drug was the government, these private companies take it, they finish it off by doing the, the final testing and so forth, and then they rip us all off by charging us an inordinate amount of money for the drugs, which I say, let them charge whatever as long as we start to get back our royalties into the government coffers so that then we can pay for these expensive drugs right back from the royalties we get. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Mike sees, uh, MM says, what about the millions of people employed in insurance companies? Don't you think the sudden transition would create havoc in their lives? Yes, I'm glad you asked that, MM, because those of us who support Medicare for All, we do care about people. We love people. We don't leave people for, we are not Ayn Randians. Ayn Rand believe in Fidesz shall survive, and if you can't survive today, you die. We don't believe that. We believe in taking care of people. So if you read Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, all the people that work in the insurance industry, they're taken care of. In other words, what happens to them is there's a two-year transition period. I th if, I, if, if I remember the, from reading the bill correctly, there is a two-year transition people for the millions of people. I don't remember how many millions in the industry, but they will be retrained. Remember, on the retrain, look. Some of them, a large percentage of them, will be absorbed into the different fields, right? Because we have to remember, when Medicare for All come in, we're going to bring in another probably 30, 40 million people that are going to be now insured. They're going to be covered. So somebody has to process that 40-something million people that are going to be coming into the system. Right, But it is still cheaper because, remember, where is all this money coming from? We no longer have to pay money to the legalized thieves. Why do I call them the legalized thieves? The shareholders who are, the shareholders are like uh, sharks, right? They, make, they say, okay, you got to pay a bill. I'm going to take 20 cents off the top of that bill. Now pay the, 80, the other 80 cents or the other 75 cents can go to pay the health care. But I'm keeping the 25 cents on the dollar. For doing nothing but paying a bill. That is how insurance work right now. Don't you get tired of being ripped off? Aren't you, are you guys so rich that you form part of that group that is ripping the rest of America off? I don't think so. You are getting ripped off too. It is ingenious. The Powell Manifesto taught us how to be stupid. I hate to put it that way. The Powell Manifesto has taught us how to listen to corporations and believe the crap that they tell us when we know that the fiduciary responsibility of a corporation is to empower and to make profits for its shareholders, not to take care of the people. That's not their duty. No corporation's duty is to take care of people. Now, if you're building a car, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Hell, if you're building a car, you shouldn't have to worry about paying insurance for your, for your employees either. Let there be, there's no reason for health insurance to be attached to any employer, period. And it shouldn't be taken care of by private health companies because those are just sharks. So, if, if there's one thing I want you to get out of this show today, is to empower yourself. It's to look at yourself and say, I am worthy. I will not allow a private corporation to convince me to lie to myself that somehow they care about me. No insurance company cares about you. No insurance company cares whether you live or die. In fact, if you get sick, they would rather you die. No insurance company wants that because if you are paying a premium, you are better to them if you get sick to die. That's, that's just the numbers. And for the amount of people that just come out all of the times fighting against Medicare for all, fighting against something that is good for them, 
it's a certain kind of, it's a mental issue. It really is a mental issue that we have so, that we have so enslaved our minds to a, an ideology that hurts us. We see it hurt us and we continue to find a way to support it. But I think the fever is breaking. I honestly think programs like Politics Done Right and others, I think the fever is going to break because I think they've gone once too hard, once too many. I think they have finally shown too much of their colors. I think they are crazy. All right, let's see. You be, um, MM now says... Okay, let me first go to what uh, Mike Cisak says. Mike Cisak says, Egberto, you never have answered my question on the inflation cost if M4A paid 100%. You're ignoring the inflation caused by massive increase in demand while supply of doctors would change. Let's stop. I want to stop you right there because you have a very good point there, Mr. Cisak. You have a very good point. That is one of the reasons I advocated for, uh, first of all, the, the, the system will adjust, right? The system will adjust by, by the following. First of all, there are a lot of students that have a lot of debt right now from medical school that they're going to throw right back into primary care. When my, da my daughter just had a stroke, and she's, by the way, she's doing fine. She just has her eye that has to recover now. And let's, let's, let's all wish for all of you guys who can give my daughter positive affirmations, all of you that are listening to my voice, give my daughter positive affirmation that her full vision comes back. Right now, she's at 60, about 65%. Um, but here's the deal. We are going to have to uh, do better with doctors, CSEC, you're absolutely correct about that. We're going to have to make it less expensive for them to go to school. And we're, we're, what we're doing right now, however, is don't, don't fool yourself. The industry has already anticipated that we're approaching Medicare for All. That's why they're creating a whole lot of uh, physician assistants. My, do my daughter was seen by a full team, two physician assistants, two, uh, there's a kind of nurse, uh, not registered nurse, but a nurse practitioner, and all these people, they form teams now, and they work in teams to be more efficient. And it works for the most part very well. But there are going to have to be techniques uh, to uh, until we ramp up to get more doctors. But the alternative, Mike CSAC, is not... I, I hope you, you, you understand that the alternative to what you're saying is um, right now let's keep the system private and those people who can't afford it just die. Your statement, in effect, says that. In other words, we can't have 100%, we just let the others die. And if you're not saying that, you're saying they get care by somebody else paying it, which would be saying the same thing. So uh, be careful with how you frame your statements. Okay, MM says, UBI is still a more viable option for more Americans. While Medicare for All is important, so is putting food on the table. UBI is the only way to tackle homelessness. Wow, MM. UBI? I am so... I am so impressed with you, sir. I really am. You are correct about UBI, sir. But let's go a little bit further. UBI tied to Medicare for All is the perfect solution or the near perfect solution. There are other issues like uh, care for kids and, and, uh, and, and tuition-free college and forgiveness of student loans so that we can reinvigorate the economy and that sort of thing. So, MM, you know... We're not all that off. And let me tell you something, MM. Um, and the reason I engage everybody, uh, Trumpists and progressives, conservatives, and everybody else, the reason I want to engage everybody is because when we talk together, right, we can actually see things work. We can see things work. I want to handle that, that Bernie Soviet style in a minute. Let me just go to Luann Gauthier Thomas. Every best wishes, wish for a thorough recovery for your daughter, Egberta. Keep it in. Thank you so kindly, Luann. I appreciate that. And um, MMU says Bernie is going to take Americans to a failed Soviet system, which will have catastrophic cons. You know, that is the scare tactics they want you to believe, MM. And deep inside of your heart, you know better than that. That's not what we're asking for. 
Uh, you don't see Denmark worried about becoming the Soviet Union. And if you want, the closest thing to what we are looking for is something similar to Denmark, but in my opinion, better. And the reason we can be better than Denmark is that we have wasted so much. We have taken our healthcare system. We have ramped the price up so high that our tolerance for the cost is so high already that we can provide so much more service for that. i tell you what a friend of mine told me. Norman said once, he said, Egberto, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in, he was in, uh, in the Netherlands. He said, they don't believe in giving you a lot of medicine. They don't believe in, in, in doing a whole lot of other things. For you to get medicine, you have to say like your pain is a 10. And, you know, so he was talking about the differences between, uh, um, not the, what is it called? Uh, the Netherlands and the United States. In the United States, they want you to get drugs as soon as possible. Because, again, the drug industry is unfettered. And the more drugs you buy, remember what, they, the more you can get. And that's how it works. But since we are so already used to having high cost, hey, we can probably provide more drugs to people. I think we should learn to be more like the Netherlands because I think we should learn to depend less on drugs than we do. But hey. All right, Mike Cisek says, we can have cash-only family doctors that everyone can afford and are increasing uh, dramatically. Cash-only LASIK and plastic surgery has become cheaper and better over time. In fact, cash-only healthcare sectors are the only sectors that are better yet cheaper. That is utopia, Mike. If you really believe that can solve our problems, I have a Brooklyn Bridge to sell you. That immediately breaks if you break a bone. It immediately breaks if you get a heart attack. It immediately breaks if you got cancer. All those things immediately break. And I know you're going to say, well, we talk about cash. And then for those big things, we have catastrophic coverage. Again, Medicare for all takes in the entire risk pool. Now, let me do tell you one thing that, that I think you have you make a lot of sense on, Mike Cisak. Uh, if you are paying a doctor cash for services. That is the kind of stuff I like, right? Because what we're looking at, Mike, is there's no middleman. In other words, a doctor is going to give you basic care and you pay $50. All that $50 go to that doctor's practice. It doesn't have to be filtered through an insurance company who has advertising costs, who has to pay lawyers and all that kind of stuff. So I am with you right there, sir. Okay? But that is the same as a single parent. Let me tell you where, where we break, where we, 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 die, we, we kind of break apart. We break apart when we take the other risks in, and that is the risk of broken bones, cancer, kidney disease, uh, strokes, and all those things, where the cash method doesn't work. So, I mean, there are two ways to look at it, right? We could say we have the cash method of you pay the doctor exactly what it's worth, maybe then subsidized by Medicare for all or some. I mean, there are, look, I am willing to compromise in certain areas with Medicare for all as long as everyone is ultimately going to get coverage. I still prefer, prefer the absolute Medicare for all. But what you just stated there is a true statement, right? Um, because you are, you are not putting a middleman in between Mike CSAC. So I have to agree with you there. Because you've just taken the middleman out. So we are agreeing. We are agreeing in those regards. Now what we need to do is how we, do we put that together, Mike? You are seeing the light. You are actually seeing the light, Brother Mike. You, know, I mean, you, you probably won't cop to it because at, at one point you're going to see that you evolve into Medicare for All based on the statement you just made there. But anyhow, folks, we're getting close to the end of the show, and I haven't even asked anybody to uh, support the show. What I do want to ask all of you is to please share these shows wild, widely. I need you to share these shows widely. I want to ask you so kindly to do that. No, it's not the same as... I didn't tell you it was the same as single pair. Single pair removes the incentive to shop around for best value if you don't have to worry about how much you have to spend. No, 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 no. You missed the point. You missed the point. Single pair doesn't. Uh, there, first of all, there can be incentives built into single pair that that incentivizes people to find a, a a cheaper provider. Because remember, our providers are still independent, right? Doctors are independent, etc. Work 
work with a start and say, what? how can we incentivize people to get better care? How can we incentivize people to take better care of themselves? How can we incentivize all these things? Yeah, we can do all of that. So instead of fighting single payer, work with single payer to start somewhere and then say, how do we incentivize it to make it better, Mike? Just don't be an opponent. We have to start somewhere, and the starting point is single payer Medicare for all. And then we can run. A, then we can start doing addendums, incentivizations, and you can be a part of that project, Mike. All right, uh, MM says, do you seriously think Bernie can open the borders and give Medi? You see, MM, that is a problem, right? When you have all these left field, crazy ideas that the right wing put out to fool you, they want to make a fool out of you, MM. Nobody's opening any borders for all of that. We're saying anybody on American soil, guess what? If, if an, an undocumented worker right now gets the coronavirus, do you, think, do, you think any, do you think that virus knows if it's an undocumented worker, an undocumented person, or a document? No, they don't. That is how silly... The argument is about whether undocumented people got covered. You should listen to a show that I did about a, a diagnosis that couldn't got, get made in the United States because of private insurance. The woman went to Italy, got free coverage because Italians covered it for free, got her diagnosis, came back to the United States, could do what the Italians told her that they didn't charge her. Well, she's, she was an undocumented American in Italy getting service from the Italian system. It's only we, Americans, who allow corporations to stupefy us into thinking that we, that somehow we are going to be, oh, they're going to overrun us. It doesn't happen that way. The coronavirus doesn't know if you're undocumented or documented, my brother, MMA. They don't know that. They don't know that. So please, let's get intelligent here. Let's improve our minds. CSEC, you can't with single-payer Medicare. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, single-payer Medicare for all is not the current Medicare system at all. It is not the current Medicare system at all. It is different and, uh, and otherwise, okay? Uh, Lee Grant, silly statement. You're too intelligent to make a statement like that, Lee Grant. Anyhow, we are coming to the end of the show. Let me do this real quick. Folks, please go ahead and go to our store, uh, store.politicsdoneright.com. Go ahead and support us. I support independent media. Get one of our T-shirts. Get one of our, you know, our products, etc., etc., etc. Please remember that we are a progressive show that needs your support. I ask you so kindly to support. If you want to support the show, please go to patreon.com slash politicsdoneright. That is p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash politicsdoneright. I just placed that in the, in the feed. You can also... Uh, Contribute to our equipment fund by going to gofundme.com slash independent dash media dash upgrade. Again, that is gofundme.com slash independent dash media dash upgrade. You can also uh, contribute to Politics Done Right by going to paypal.me slash politics done right. Again, that is paypal.me slash politics done right and of course please go ahead and see what you can get at our store cups books the whole works my book as i see it class warfare the only resort to right-wing doom you'd learn everything about the economic and mike csac you should probably pick up one of those books at where store.politicsdoneright.com i guarantee you you will be enlightened folks i thank you so kindly i thank you so kindly for spending this time with me my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. It goes this way. I am what? Out! Out!